Okay, we're going to do the inverse law plus of s over parentheses s squared plus 1 and square. And you see that we have this square right here. If we didn't have the square, then s over s squared plus 1, that would be cosine t, right? That would be so easy. However, we do have this square, and you know the square means that we have this factor, it happens twice. So let me write it down. This is s squared plus 1 times s squared plus 1. And if you would like, you can go ahead and use the partial fractions. But, no, let's not do that. Uh, we have a better way, because now we can look at s over s squared plus 1 times s squared plus 1. as a product of two things. And when we have a regular product in the s world, we can take that to the t world and it becomes the convolution, right? And it will be much cooler. In, it's not necessarily easier, but it's going to be really cool, right? So let's do that in here. So this is going to be the same as the inverse dot plus, and let's put down the 1 over this first, all right? 1 over s squared plus 1, and we will close that. And remember, once we do the inverse dot plus of this, we are in the t world. And in the t world, when we break it apart, it will be the convolution, right? And we have the second inverse dot plus transform, and now let me put on the s. And then we have the same denominator over s squared plus 1, like that, right? So this is what we have. And now, this right here is just sine t. And then we have to do the convolution, and this right here is the cosine t. It will be so much easier when we use the convolution theorem backwards so that this inverse Laplace is pretty easy, likewise this is also pretty easy. And now this is perhaps the harder part because we have to work out the convolution part, which is going to be an integral, isn't it? By the definition of uh, convolution, it's from 0 to t, and this is the first function. We will plug in t minus v into the first function, so we will have sine of t minus v. And we multiply this regularly inside here with the second function, cosine, but we plug in phi in here, which is cosine phi, like this. And this is integrated with respect to phi. And now, if you look at, well, we have a product of sine and cosine. And the angles inside are not the same, so we have to use the product to some formula. And let me write this down right here for you guys. Whenever we have the sine of an angle times cosine of another angle, this is going to be one half times sine of a minus b, right? And then plus sine of a plus b, like this. If you use this formula, the integration part, it will be pretty easy. Otherwise, you will have to try to use integration by parts, or maybe it will not work, but you know, just use this, okay? Anyway, in this case, you know that a is this right here, right? The t minus v, and then the b is just the v, right? So this right here in blue is going to be 1 half, parentheses, sine of a is the t minus v, and then we have to minus the v, so like this. And then we add it with sine of the sum of them, which is t minus v plus v for the v, like that. Okay, simplify this a little bit. We have the 1 half as 1 half, and then we have sine, and then this is going to be t minus 2 v, and then this is going to be, well, cancel, cancel, so we have just plus sine t. Okay? So, this is going to be the integral from 0 to t. We have the 1 half. It's a constant multiple. Let's take that to the front right here, 1 half. And then here's the function part, so let me write it down as how it is. Sine of t minus 2v, and then we add it with sine of t. And remember, this right here is integrated with respect to v, right? And now we'll continue. The 1 half is still all the way in the front. That's 1 half. No problem on that. And now let me open the parentheses. Integrating sine, we will get negative cosine. So let's put that down first. We have negative cosine. And then the input is just linear, so we can copy it down. t minus 2v. But 
you have to ask yourself, what is the derivative of the inside? The derivative of t minus 2 phi in the phi world it is going to be negative 2. When you are doing this backwards, you have to divide negative 2. In another word, multiply by 1 over negative 2, like that. Right? Once again, the derivative of t in the phi world is 0. The derivative of negative 2 phi is negative 2. When we're integrating, be sure you divide that out, right? Like that. So that's the first integration part. And then the second term right here, this is sine t, which is a constant in the phi world. So when you integrate this guy, you're just going to get plus, put a phi in the front, and then sine t, like this. Isn't it? Right? Once again, this is just a constant. And just you know, integrate 1 in the phi world, which is phi, and multiply by that constant. Anyway, this right here, we have to plug in, plug in, right? 0 and t, like this. OK, let me just put on the 1 half, still all the way in the front. And of course, you see this already, negative, negative 1 half. The negative cancel out. We do have the 1 half, OK? We do have the 1 half, but negative, negative become positive. OK, plugging t into all the phi's, right? This and that. So we will have a positive 1 half, right? Positive 1 half and then cosine. t is still t and then minus 2, and this phi becomes t. So we have t like that, right? And then we add. This phi becomes t, and then sine t is still sine t, like this, all right? And this is the first term, after you plug in t into all the phi's. And now, and of course, don't be lazy, plugging 0 into all the phi's. Remember, we still have the 1 half, so bring down the 1 half, and this is minus 1 half. And then we have the cosine. t is still t minus phi becomes 0, so we have 2 times 0 like this, right? And then we add it with plugging 0 into phi, so we have 0 times sine t, like that. And now let me see, I close this parenthesis. I need to open, I need to close another parenthesis like that, right? Okay, let's see what do we have left. Uh, this is pretty much negative t, right? And then let's just distribute, distribute now. So I will take the one half distributing side, if you guys don't mind, and do that as well. Let's focus on this first though. One half times one half is of course one over four, and then we have the cosine, right? And let me just work this out for you guys. This is going to be negative t, right? And then one half times this, which is plus one half t sine t. Okay, and I'm going to do the, well. First of all, this is just zero, so that's bye bye. That's good. I have to distribute the negative, but I also have to distribute the one half. Put the one half here. One half times one half is going to be one over four. But remember, I also have to distribute the negative, so it's minus one over four. And here we have cosine, and then we have this t. Right? That's pretty much what we have. And now. Can we simplify anything? Well, here we have cosine of negative t. This is cosine t. But the truth is, this right here, because cosine is an even function, this is the same as cosine t as well. So let me write this down. This is the same as 1 over 4 cosine just a t. And then let me just write it down real quick. Because you see this and that will cancel. That's really nice. This is positive 1 over 4 cosine t. This is negative 1 over cosine t. So altogether, you just have that. <laughs> I will put this down as t on the top, sine t on the top as well, over 2, like that. Leave a comment down below. Do I need to put on plus c? Okay? Anyway, I will wait for your comment. Plus c or not. That's it.